So, hello everyone again and welcome to my channel. So excited to be back again and talk to you about the applications of favored 3x3 sigmotropic reactions in nature. Now, we looked at various ways by which you can actually drive the formation of our products with the help of a 3x3 sigmotropic reaction one either in the presence of heat or in the presence of a base slash heat and another one is the presence of some interesting strings within particular rings like small member rings for example four member rings or three member rings how that we actually push the reaction in the positive direction which is to the right with the help of a 3 by 3 sigmotropic reaction. Now, in here, we're going to look at a specific way by which you can actually make an important product that is used industrially for the manufacturing of perfumes or other things like lemon oil or flavors. Now, one of these is this particular compound called citral, and this is kind of a citrate coming from lemon or so, and it's quite interesting how this actually has a strong aroma smell which is kind of an aroma compound in here so this aroma compound seto how are we able to actually make this so there are actually two ways to go about it one particular method is using these two species in here one which is this particular compound with a double bond in here and the other compound is this over here once you combine both together, what we have is a dehydration process where we lose water and what we have as a result is the formation of an ether ring over here with oxygen and in here we have our other segment in there. Now take note that what happens next is that by numbering we can actually see the sigma bond that will be broken and the sigma bond that will be formed. Now, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, three is the part where we actually make our new product or make our new sigma bond, and one, one is the path where we actually lose our sigma bond. So, what happens in this case is that in the presence of heat, what we have is the favoring of a three by three sigmatropic reaction where this actually forms double bond here, double bond forms a sigma bond and this double bond reforms a double bond over here and what we have is the formation of a pre-intermediate in here where we have this particular segment being formed and what happens here is that there is kind of an interesting positioning of our double bond with respect to our neighboring double bond over here now what we realize is that if we do this reaction again here we go back to this particular compound which is what we don't want but here we have a, another double bond over here now what we realize is that there will be a rotation of our bond because this is an sp3 bond here and that can actually rotate flexibly and what we have is that we'll actually go in this particular direction where we position our two adjacent double bonds in such a way that it will be really efficient in terms of performing another type of a 3x3 three three sigmatropic reaction. So what we have as a result is by numbering we have 1, 2, 3, here we have 1, 2, 3. What we have now is the formation of our new sigma bond here and the breakage of our sigma bond over here and what we have is this forming a double bond this breaks off over here, this reforms the sigma bond over here, and what we have is the formation of our product, which is this particular cetal compound over here. So we have oxygen attached to carbon, attached to oxygen, hydrogen, and in here we have our double bond here, and in here we have our methyl group attached to another methyl group, and this is our other double bond, and we get that as our first way of actually making a CETA. Now, another way we can actually go about this is by treating individual compounds and actually forming some sub reagents that will be crucial for combining together and actually making this. Instead of the rotating our bond, we can just directly go in this particular 
intermediate species in our for we to actually perform a three by three and then from this product now let me show you how that has been done over here now next one is this same compound which we have over here CHO on the other side we have let me try and change the color of this so you'll be able to notice what is happening over here uh, we have that over there so instead of it performing a dehydration reaction all we just do is just continue in here and then subject this to a base where this alpha proton here will be removed thereby forming an enolate and let me break this up to actually show you that this is this and this is that over there okay so by that way you can actually see that this will actually form an enolate over here and what we have is this particular segment a double bond here and over here we have a hydrogen and in here we have an oxygen negative charge species over here now take note that there is this one here will actually go in a different way where in the presence of water the water will be deprotonated with the help of this hydroxide over here but then what happens in this particular case is that once that is done just do that first here they put near this and let me go forget my double bond here now take note that as this is performing here this becomes a good living group because we are forming a positive charged hydroxyl or hydronium ion over here so what, is ha what happens next is that this particular point will have a positive charge but in our for way to stabilize the species we will rather perform a po put a positive charge in this particular tertiary carbon because that way we can be able to stabilize this particular positive charge and that will lead to our double bond moving over here and this actually cleaving off over there so this will lead to the formation of this particular species which is what we have in here we have a positive charge here that we have our double bond over at this particular region now this and this will then be combined together and what happens in here is that this oxygen that has a negative charge will reform a double bond now this particular alkyl group will then become a nucleophile and attack this particular region over there and what we have is the formation of our intermediate in here which we actually undergo a 3 by 3 sigmatropic reaction you can take note that this is actually positioned properly and that will actually just make it to go just once in terms of a 3 by 3 sigmatropic reaction rather than going twice in our first method this actually just goes in just one way so if you know about this is so 1 1 2 2 3 3 what we have is the breakage of our bond here, sigma bond, and the formation of our sigma bond over here. And this is done by performing this 3x3 three three sigmatropic reaction. And what we have is the formation of our product in the presence of heat. And this our product actually shows that hey, we can actually make this in another possible way. And Put that down here and over this region we have this other part in this particular case so take note that in here we have our two tri substituted double bonds in here and also present in here but this actually goes in a three by three process twice one here and one over here however this just goes in just one way direction which is going from here 
to this particular point over here. So that's about it for this particular video. I know this video is kind of long, but I hope you're able to understand it. Please hit the comment down below. Let me hear your thoughts about this. See you all in my next video. Peace, love you all, and be smart. Bye.